What an absolute gorgeous aquarium. Today we're gonna finish the stocking to the 2,000 gallon aquarium. Why we're doing it right now, you're not going to like, but first, let me remind you what's actually in this bad boy. So if you don't remember, we began converting the 2,000 gallon aquarium over to a community tank several months ago. Don't mind the lighting. It's kind of like dusk right now. The lights are dimming down. I'm adding them at night. I j I'm gonna feed the fish before we add in, but uh, I've gotta add them now uh, for a specific reason, and I'll tell you here in a moment. Historically, when we add fish to the aquarium, it's so exciting. It's so fun to get the fish, put them in, and we watch them, etc. And that's typically what we always talk about. But today, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the fish we're getting because I haven't had some Corydora uh, easily seeable for a while. And I really wanna talk about them and tell you some of my favorite things about them that I think is gonna blow your socks off. Excuse me, chair. So they are currently in my quarantine system. I don't wanna to get too close because there's actually fish in there that aren't going in yet. Oh my Lord, look at you guys. We actually have a, uh, a bunch of a pistagrama in this tank and man do they ever camouflage in this tank really well these tanks are absolutely disgusting i know i made a video on it and why it's so great and uh they're doing fantastic with that said in the quarantine we have a couple of festivums that made it through being added to the 2000 we also have some bleeding heart tetras as well as some san juan corridor if we can kind of move everybody out of the way now, the reason why I'm pausing everything right now, because you guys know, I mean, we have so much to do out here and uh, I'm so, so bogged down with so many things I want to do. But if I don't add these guys to the 2000, I'm probably not going to anytime soon. And it's really not fair. We got these guys five months ago and in quarantine, typically you max out at about six weeks. They've been in there five times longer, almost five times longer than they typically should. Trust me, they've passed the quarantine. They're incredibly healthy. They're ready to go. That's not a big deal. They deserve to go into their home. But the biggest problem is this. I only have about 20 of those pep of, of those uh, San Juan Corridor left, and I only have about 20, maybe 25 of the Bleeding Heart Tetras. Mind you, I started with about 100 of those bleeding hearts. You see, what the problem is, is every time a friend comes over and they got a fish tank and we look at everything, they see the bleeding hearts and they see how big they are and how uh, vibrant, how beautiful they are. And I'm like, you know what? Take a few with you, take a few. I've done that four times now and I can't stop. I, I just really want people to enjoy it just as much as I do. But if I keep doing that, I'm not gonna have any left. So let's add them to the tank, but first. So we all know that Corydora catfish is a incredibly popular fish in the aquarium hobby. And that's probably largely due to the fact that there's so many of them. There's over 170 described species to date. Literally over 170 of the same fish just looking different. So much to pick from. We also know for the most part they're easy to keep and relatively peaceful. They do great in community tanks. We know that they are a fantastic cleanup crew for the most part. We like to have bottom dwellers that will kind of turn over the substrate, kind of eat uneaten food, etc. And the Corridor tends to be great at that. Plus they'll eat darn near anything you put in the tank. They're not all that picky. But for a small fish, they also live for an incredible amount of time. Now, the average lifespan in the home aquarium could be probably anywhere between three to 10 years. I mean, if you kind of look around, that's what an average hobbyist will see. However, when you get into, you know, really researching it, there's reports that say they can live for 15 to 25 years. And that's one of the longest living fish that I, that I know of. Plus they like, they have armor plating, so they do really well with fish that might be picking at them and whatnot. Um, however, if I were those fish picking on a Corydora, I would certainly pick something else to pick on, and you're gonna find out why in a minute. When you think about Cory Dora, the name, what do you kind of think? I kind of think like it rhymes with Dora the Explorer, <laughs> Cory Dora. But, you know, Cory Dora, if, uh, it, it's a Greek name, uh, but technically in Greek, Cory is spelled K-O-R-Y, and then Dora. Cory means helmet, Dora means skin. Helmet, skin. And what's a common name for the Cory Dora? armored catfish, plated catfish, things like that. Like you would think that, uh, and when you look at a catfish, they do have those armored scales that protect them uh, from other predators. So the name just simply makes sense. I always thought that was, it was kind of cute. I, I think it, I just liked it. Remember that video I made on uh, venomous fish that I have, or I forget what I titled it, but that was actually technically inspired by Corydora, but I couldn't get any good videos of the Corydoras in my tank, so I never included them. 
Um, but the Corydora is technically a venomous fish. I believe most, if not all, are technically uh, venomous. Their dorsal spine. The biggest spine on their back is venomous. It injects the venom much like a freshwater stingray. The spine is protected by a sheath or like a, a mucus or like a skin type of thing. And when that skin breaks behind that dorsal spin, spine is uh, the venom pockets, which go in and inject it. It's not gonna kill you, let's put it that way. It's gonna feel like more like a bee sting than anything, but you're not gonna look at your Corydora the same way after you know that. And that might be a little more common knowledge, but what this is, is not. In some circumstances, the bronze Corydora, its mating rituals and mating habits are a little different from others when the, the bronze Corydora is mating. I always found this funny. I never talked about it because this is a, largely a PG channel. I always knew about it. The, the, the male will present, okay. I don't know how to say this without being so explicit. I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to try. The, the bronze Corydora will display its belly. And when it does that, it's displaying it to the female. The female will put the male's sexual organ in her mouth and he will inject his sperm into her mouth, which she immediately swallows and digests it so fast that when she passes it on the end, it's still viable. That's when she lays her eggs as well. And that is how some Corydora <laughs> reproduce. I'm not making this up. On the note of Corydora being venomous. Yeah, they're venomous. Do you ever meet an animal that can be venomous and poisonous at the same time? The Corydora, some species can be. Some Corydora species can be self-poisonous. They'll excrete uh, uh, through, a, through a mucus out of their gills, a poison that will poison the fish in the immediate surrounding area, almost immediately killing them. The downside to that, is it, it mostly, almost every time, kills the Corydora as well. So it's not necessarily the best self-defense mechanism because they die too, but it's one of them. So it's fascinating to me because a lot of the time, some people's fish will die unexpectedly and I sometimes, one of the things I'll look at is, do you have any Corydora in that tank? Because I'm always wondering if that's ever happened to somebody in the home aquarium. And I'll pass this question on to you guys. Is if, Have you ever had mysterious fish deaths and there were Corydora in the tank? The Corydora lived, everything else died. You just felt like the Corydora were hardy. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to know if you know about this stuff and if you have any further information on it. I'm not gonna elaborate too much, but I'm gonna get the ball rolling for you. Did you, uh, finally, I think I'm just gonna do top five. Finally, do you guys ever hear about the theory of evolution by natural selection? You know, um, I believe somebody named Charles Darwin might have uh, come up with that. Uh, did you know he discovered the peppered Corydora? Literally one of the most popular Corydora in the aquarium hobby. I think that what I'm trying to get at is next time you look at the Corydora, it's not necessarily a beginner's fish anymore. You have these stories to tell somebody else that comes and looks at your tank and be like, oh, fish tanks are silly. And then you can tell them these types of things because that's what I do. And people look at them differently and they're more fascinating, they're more interested. And none of these stories are boring, especially the reproduction, Never mind. Okay. I got all the fish in the bucket. It's not as many as I thought it was going to be, but uh, it's the final stocking for the 2000. Some more Corydora. You know, and over the next few months or years, look at this tank. There's so many fish. It's, it's so cool. There's gonna be a few hundred in there. But anyways, this will be the last stocking and the last fish that we add to this aquarium. And then we're just gonna leave it alone. We'll come back and do an update. Like there's so many things I wanna show you an update. We have to build a whole brand new filter for this to accommodate all the other fish that's added. Plus the Asian arowana, which is over in that tank right now, has to go up here still. Um, and with all that extra bio load, the, the, the filter that's on it right now, I'm just not incredibly comfortable with it. But for example, like I ended up hiding everything in that tree. It's literally now the tree of life. Without the pumps that are in there, everything shuts down. Um, anyways, everybody's a little active right now because it is dusk. And uh, this is going to offer these fish, which are considerably smaller. Um, well, the Corydora is the ones that I'd be worried about the most. But uh, having dim lighting in there is going to allow them to kind of maneuver throughout the aquarium a little easier and get away and uh, do just fine. Let's just go ahead and get them. Look how big. 
Like, look at this big bugger. All right, he doesn't want to be picked up, and I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be picked up either. All right, let's just get him in. So, oh, all the lids on this aquarium? I'm changing out everything. These lids are gonna be to every aquarium, but I'm building new lids. I'm building a new almost everything out here. In the days to come. The reason why I could take this bucket of fish and just dump it in without acclimating them or anything like that is very simple, and we've talked about this before. I don't have to acclimate the temperature or water parameters. Everything out here for my freshwater tanks match. Besides the salt water, obviously, they're a little saltier. So I can technically just take this and dump them right in. Come here and look. Nothing too impressive. Where is everybody? All the corridor, of course, went right to the bottom. The fish are eating all the debris that was in that tank. So those bleeding hearts will settle down a little bit. They're a little panicky right now, kind of swimming all over the place. Um, but once they settle in, they're going to be absolutely gorgeous in here. Corridor will do fine as well. Yeah, they're going to do just fine. Corridor is so, so active right now. I don't blame them. Everybody's wondering who's in here. It's almost like they could taste the other fish that are in the tank right now. Okay, very next day. In fact, it's the day we're uploading this video, so we're not going to be able to uh, uh, do too much of an update here or anything too crazy, but I just want to kind of show you all of the fish. Uh, and how they are all actually doing. The bleeding hearts are mixed in with the... Oh, here they are. They're kind of staying together, which is super, super cool. I'm starting to think I should have just did like 300 of the same tetra, but this is kind of cool too. It's just so much to look at and so many different types of fish, etc. The... Uh, I just saw a group of Corydora over by the wood here, but they're with the auto sinkless. If you don't remember, we got a ton of auto sinkless in here. These Corydora are doing absolutely fantastic. The uh, San Juan Corydora are less shy than the other ones that are in there, but I'm thinking it'll bring them out. The other ones stay amongst the rocks and well, they don't go in the tree as much as they once were because now there's pumps and uh, circulation within there, but everybody else is, is, is like seriously doing just phenomenal. I gotta do a big water change on this tank. It's a little cloudy. Um, but you know things like that will uh, wouldn't even wow the, They're all just swimming together. It's so cool. This is such a cool tank in person I'm telling you it's just absolutely gorgeous and amazing it's Interesting to see how everybody's acting though the more fish I put in here the more out and open they will be However, you'll see them a lot of the times when I'm filming they'll be over here But that's because I'm over here and they want they want me to feed them. They're like um they're just like my cats won't leave me alone they just want food from me feed me feed me feed me yeah look at all these guys these guys are just hanging out in the bubbles and stuff oh, that's pretty cool there's a couple of, uh, there's a mixture of uh tetras over here sort of it's interesting to watch them play in that though we got to do a feeding video on this uh tank here eventually there's the corridors over on the wood here they're everywhere no matter where i look in this tank there's action and activity i mean um these bleeding hearts Oh, look at the corridor, like swimming with those bleeding hearts over there. Do you see that? It's a little too dark. Sorry. Um, a lot of the times I'm looking at the tank and not looking at the camera to see what it's capturing because I'm enjoying this just as much as you. <laughs> Although I'm being a little selfish because I get to see this every day and you're just getting to see it for a few minutes on video whenever I decide to film it. But discus are good um, over there in the corner here. A few of them. Um, yeah, no fighting, nothing. Everybody's in perfect shape. There's one in the corridor. Um, it's just interesting to see and we got to wait till everybody grows out and gets absolutely enormous there's I mean even the angels are getting bigger and bigger and bigger everybody's just becoming enormous look at some of the uh, the Severums we'll just go over the stocking real quick so we've got Walru Amphicanthoids we have uh, Heroes Severus or the Severum we've got uh, you know Angelfish we've got Denies and Barbs we've got uh, some some rainbows, we've got uh, blue tetras, we've got, did I say festivums? We've got festivums, and we've got uh, tiger barbs, and uh, what else is in here? <laughs> we've got red-eyed tetras, we've got bleeding hearts, we've got corydora, two different species of corydora. We've got uh, discus, we have, oh shoot, what else do we have? Man, the, the bleeding hearts are just like sticking to, I love it. I, man, I kind of think I should have just did a two, three hundred of those. 
I don't know. I like this too. What do you guys think? Do you think we should have went with more um, numbers of individual fish or do you like the way this has turned out? I think in time, it's just going to get better and better. Mind you, we still have to move the Asian arowana to his throne. And these lids, I'm replacing them. Every lid in here will have the exact same lids as what's on the 375, even the 700. All the 180s, the 120s, everything. It's already ordered, but you wouldn't believe what I got to pay for acrylic and whatnot right now. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Just awesome, awesome tank. There's just so much going on. It's so active. I never really see such a monstrous aquarium with such a variety of fish in it. But I do love it. I'm not completely satisfied with the clarity of the water, but I like it so that it looks like the fish are literally floating in the air. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Final stocking for the 2000. Oh, there's a sunshine pleco in here too. Uh, I think it's seen, we've seen it earlier in the video. Oh, some Corydora right there. Is that, which species is this? Two different, two different. Or are they the same? No, those are San Juans, okay. Yeah, just just fascinating. No matter where you look in this tank, something's going on. And the uh, there's a, a mono shrimp in here as well. They hang out on and in the tree. Um, usually once the lights come on, I literally just turn them on so we can finish filming here. Nothing else is on out here, <laughs> just this tank. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, it's a couple hours after the lights come on, you'll see them more active and whatnot. I don't know why these these uh, touches are over there in the bubbles. Maybe they just like them. Yeah, such a cool tank. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was the final stocking to the 2000. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet and you don't want to miss any of these things, I'm telling you, this is like nothing. Comp oh, there's one of the old ones. <laughs> I just keep spotting fish I haven't seen for a while. It's so cool. It's so awesome. Um, Okay, I'm going to end this. Otherwise, I'm literally just going to babble and babble and babble like I, well, typically do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. I'll see you in the next one.